In this video, we're going to be talking about the use of PureRef as a tool for using reference. So the last video, we talked about different areas that we can go and find different reference. And now we're going to be taking a look at this tool that makes it really nice and convenient for you to take the images that you find and to build a board like kind of like what you're taking a look at here. And you can also use it with um, your 3D programs. Even if you have a single monitor, you can have some of these images sit directly over the top of uh, the programs that you're using, such as Maya or ZBrush or Photoshop or any, any program, really. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this program and take a look at how we can use it. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is creating a reference folder and making sure that you keep everything kind of nice and organized and that you always can get back to the images that you find at a later time. So you can see within this project I just made a reference folder and then within here you can see some of the different images that uh, I was able to find. So I'm just going to load this up and I'm going to deselect the things that aren't images. So I think we got this here and then what I can do is just right click on here and I'm going to just say open. So we're just going to be uh, taking a look at this with the standard Windows Photo Viewer. And you can see we could do this. We could use this as an option and just kind of scroll through this and have this up at any time. Now, the advantage to PureRef is that you can save a layout and then you can just load it up at any time. So if you're bouncing back and forth between multiple projects, you just load up PureRef, and then you load up uh, whatever that particular project that you have is. Okay, so this is um, at least the starting point for everything, right? Make yourself a reference folder, find the images that you're gonna use, and then store those within that folder structure. So let's look at making sure that we've got the program. So if you go to pureref.com, that you can see this is the website that's been built for this. If you go down to the uh, downloads area, you can name a price for this. I believe you could probably put a price of zero if you want, but I definitely recommend paying some money for this. I think it's a great uh, little application. It doesn't cost you a whole lot of money. So um, after you download pureref, you're going to be able to take a look and load it up. The other thing I wanted to point out, if you go here to pureref, you can see that it's got a lot of different information for the different hotkeys and things that you're going to be able to use. You can get to that within the program, but just wanted to kind of show you that it's there. They also have forms and support for things as well. Okay, now that we got PureRef downloaded, let's go ahead and open it up. Just hit the Windows key and type in PureRef, and you should be able to find the application for that. Just go ahead and open that, and when you do, you'll see a screen that looks uh, something like what we've got going on here. You can see that we got this uh, Control H. So if you tap Control H, you can see it's going to bring up some help for you and just give you some quick tips on some ways to navigate, things like that. Um, there's also this thing that you can go to Keybinder, and this is where you can kind of find a lot of the different controls for different things. And uh, it's pretty extensive. So I'll let you take your time and kind of look through some of that. But um, let's go ahead and get some images in here. If we right click on here, we're also going to get a menu that we're going to be able to use. So if we go to load, um, if you do want to load a project after it saves, you go ahead and do that here. But the first time, like loading images, you can go here and say load images, and we'll select um, all the different images in here. I know that these things right here are not images. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open, and it's going to put the images in uh, for you. So the first thing, if you select one of these images, you can select it and you can move it around. If you hold down control, you can move the thing. Uh, if we hold down control and shift, you can kind of snap things as you rotate, if you want to rotate this thing. If you do control and alt together in left mouse, you can zoom in and out of the uh, image. Now, if you middle mouse wheel, uh, you can zoom out the whole kind of canvas that they've got and if you right click you can move the canvas around like this. So again middle mouse wheel zooms in and out right click moves this here. So I've taken just a little bit of time to rearrange all the images and actually went into Photoshop and kind of built this little cheat sheet and I want to show you some of the um, most basic controls that I think are important for just manipulating these images and kind of laying things out. So I already kind of looked at moving the canvas around. If you click images, you can click and drag them. You can do Control and Alt, and that will uh, scale the images like this, scale it up and down. And if you want to rotate an image, if you hold down Control and just click on it, you can rotate the image like this. Now if you add Shift to this, it's going to uh, snap this into degrees of increments of rotation like that. 
Uh, the next thing that we could do is if we want to crop the image, let's use this one up here. So we'll select this. You see it's selected in blue like this. If you hold down C and you click and you drag out a marquee on the image, you can crop the parts of the image that you don't want. So you can actually get a better like fit for this thing and take up a little bit more screen real estate. So I'm just clicking and dragging, holding on control and all, and then I'm going to kind of zoom into that a little bit. Now if you need to reset the crop for that, you can hold down control and shift and then uh, tap C and then click on it. And that will reset it back to what its default thing was before you actually crop the image. Um, after that, let's take a look at flipping an image. So if we do Alt and Shift and you click and drag left or right, you can flip the image like this. So depending on your reference, if you need it facing a particular direction, that could come in handy. So let's say we wanted to make all the cannons go to the uh, left, we could do that. So what just happened there, I accidentally did this. If you double click on the image, it'll zoom to that image and if you double click it'll go back out to this kind of full screen uh, thing that you got here so that could be handy as well so um, I think that's gonna be enough for this program I mean there's more to it than just this but um, I think this is quite a bit for maybe what you need there are some other options for allowing you to kind of view these images um, if you got a one single monitor uh, thing you can you can use this to have this image overlaid over the top of one of your program so if you want if you um, right click on here you can go to this mode and you can see there's control Y and control T um, you can overlay a selection so if we have this selected if we do control Y it's gonna give you this kind of warning about things and you can see we would be able to take this and we've got the whatever's going on in the in the desktop you know the background back here um, this image will be laid over the top of that so if we do control Y for that it'll bring it back uh, just like that so you can go back and forth between those two different modes like this and that will overlay this over the top of whatever that program is that you're using so the last thing I would like to talk to you about is just saving your project and loading your project. So if we get done making the layout, let me just right click on here and we can go to save and we'll do save as for the first time that you see here. And just make sure that we are in the right spot for doing this. I'm just checking this real quick. So I've already got one made, but I'm going to call this uh, maybe um, underscore V2 for version 2 like this. And I'll hit save. And so it's just save this up. And the next time that you come into Pure Rough, if you see that blank screen that we started off with at the very beginning, you're just going to right click and you say load. And you can say load or load recent. So I'm going to hit load. I'm going to load up the um, old one like this that you see here. Right? So it'll load that up. And if you're working on a different project, you just go load, load again. And let's load up this version 2 that we just made. So you can see it makes it really easy for bouncing around from different projects to load up uh, the reference that you need for each one of those projects. But even if uh, you're working on this one particular project and you've got multiple things for reference, it might be a way that you uh, make different boards for that and it's easy for you to kind of load all that stuff up. Now if you, if you want, you can lay all that stuff out on uh, one big kind of board within uh, Pure Ref as well. But um, yeah, it's really up to you kind of how you want to manage that stuff. But it's a great tool for using reference and loading it and having it uh, available for you. So this should conclude everything that you need uh, to know about reference, where to find reference, how to load it up, how to uh, build these reference sheets within PureRef, and actually use the program and get yourself working pretty quickly uh, to build everything you need for your project.